Now, what kind of psychologist would I be if I didn't give you a test? That's right. I'm going to give you a test. I'm going to give you 10 signs that your relationship may be about to fail or is currently failing so that you can recognize them and avoid them. And then we'll talk about how to solve each one of these things in, in the next, uh, next couple of uh, slides or videos. Okay? Let's take a test. These are the 10 signs that your relationship might be failing. I'm going to break each one down. Now, I'm laughing, but I want you to be serious because if you have these 10 things, if you have, you know, if you have a couple of these things and you really need to invest in this video, and you need to listen up and pull your partner into the room so that you all can stand the test of time. All right, number one, you have more negatives than positives in your relationship. When I mean by negative and positive, I mean interactions. So the research shows that happily married couples, or couples that stay together, have five positive interactions to every one negative interaction, kind of like a, a, a bank account. They have five deposits for every one withdrawal. Now, negative relationships have a 0.8 to 1 ratio, which basically means for every positive interaction, there's a negative interaction. You can see why the relationship is not working. So that means for every uh, time you have a good time, there's a negative time. So make sure that's five to one. And number two, you have something called the four horsemen in your relationship. And the four horsemen alone lead to divorce close to 85 to 90 percent of the time. And the four horsemen are criticism, defensiveness, contempt, and something called stonewalling, which is typically something that men do, which is building up a stonewall between themselves and a significant other. Uh, as far as being emotionally numb and just not responding, just shutting down. Curtains closed. It's called stonewalling. If you have those four things in your relationship, might be in trouble. Uh, number three, uh, surprisingly, emotional engagement and withdrawal. And when I say surprisingly, it actually is marked by a decrease in the amount of times that you argue. So it means you get to the point where you're like, it's no point in arguing, just forget it. And you kind of just start retreating and going into your, your separate worlds. And it's also marked by less positive affect because you're not really trying to have fun. You're not trying to be friends anymore. You're just kind of just removing yourself emotionally from the relationship while staying there. Uh, number four, it's called failed repair attempts. And this is where either you or your partner tries to make up with one another and then someone doesn't respond. So, hey, it can be, hey, let's talk and someone says no, or it could be as subtle as, hey, you know, it's a beautiful day outside. Let's take a walk, and your partner refuses. They'll repair attempts. Number five, which is called negative sentiment override, NSO, which basically means that you're too negative in a relationship, meaning that the reality of the relationship is better than what you, than what you say it is. So in other words, you're too negative. So you might have five days of getting along in two days of having a great time and then you say, you know what, this relationship never works for me. It's all bad. I hate being in it. There's nothing good about it. You're too negative. It's called negative sentiment override. Uh, number six, we call it rehearsing negativity or staying mad. This is where you rehearse things to say to your partner or rehearse things in your, reason, uh, in your mind or reasons to stay mad at them. It's like when you're separate, instead of trying to come, to, come towards them, you're actually going away and saying, you know what, you know what, he's selfish all the time. All he does is think about himself. Or, you know, she's so self-centered. Or she's so condescending. The more you're away from them, even when you're not fighting, you're actually rehearsing staying mad in your mind. Uh, number seven is called flooding. And all of us have this happen to us, but it's when it's too much, it floods the relationship. And what I mean by flooding is emotional flooding. It's when your heart beats above 100 beats a minute and you pretty much cannot hear anything your partner says. And this is when you either shut down or you explode. If you have flooding in your relationship on a consistent basis, it's not good. Oh, number eight. Ladies, you're going to like this one. It's clinically proven. Uh, one of the factors that leads to a failed relationship is the, I'm going to read it, the failure of men to accept the influence of their woman. So that basically means that men just don't respond to women. When you do that, it's headed towards relationships. Let me give you two examples. Typically, we see this in, when men tend to disengage from the relationship. So excessive stonewalling. So he won't talk to you. He shuts down. He won't respond. He won't have a conversation. He won't write. He won't do anything. He's just disengaged. Another way is when men escalate when you bring up your... Your, your needs or the things that you want in a relationship. Now, a lot of men become, become defensive and shut down, but men that refuse to change, I mean, they become belligerent, they become overly defensive, uh, contempt, 
They just do not respond. That is not good for your relationship. So guys, we have to make sure that that we're not that we willingly accept the influence of the women in our lives. I know you're thinking. Now, what about the women? Well, the research shows that most women, I'd say all, most women do accept the influence of men in their lives. Like for instance, we may say, "Baby, you know what? I think that skirt is a little bit too short to go out with the girls." Now, she may not like that, but chances are most women will go back and change or put on something to wrap up even though they don't like it. They usually listen to us and accept our influence. And if you don't, ladies, then the relationship is doomed. But the research shows men that accept the influence of their wives, that's the critical factor in making relationships work. All right, number nine, you argue to win versus to simply understand your partner's point of view. And I know we all get emotional. We try to win and we try to defend ourselves. We try to make the other person look bad. But if you have that in a relationship, it's headed towards failure. Towards failure, Because remember, you're one. You're not two. You're one. And so you can't really win when you're arguing against your partner because you're the same, same person. Remember, you're coming together. And then number ten, you lack rituals that bond you together and you don't have consistent dates scheduled in. Remember how you courted one another to fall in love? If you don't continue to court while you're in a relationship, you're going to disconnect. Listen, relationships just don't stay together from osmosis. It takes time building love maps to one another and getting to know what's going on in each other's world and courting and dating and taking each other out to eat. The same thing you did to get him or her is the same thing you need to do to keep them. Uh, some people say you have to be your husband or wife's boyfriend or girlfriend and date them the same way your entire life. So if you have those ten things in your relationship, hopefully you have none, or hopefully you have a few. But if you like so many other people watching this and you have a lot, then you're in the right place. I'm going to help you to fix it. So sit back, your popcorn ready, call your partner over, have them look at this video again, write the check marks by the things that you have, and let's get busy into repairing your relationship. It's not as bad as what you think it can be fixed. Relax.